and welcome to the Analog Toys live stream, which will be returning much more frequently um, than it has been in recent months, I suppose. Um, 3POA is not going away. I'll still be doing the 3POA on the new 3POA, 3POA channel um, every other week. So um, I'm thinking that uh, the week opposite to 3POA, I'm most likely going to do an Analog Toys live stream. And for those of you who don't follow the channel on Patreon, um, I used to provide the odd channel update video here on YouTube. I stopped doing that when I started Patreon a couple of years back. Um, and I give all of the updates there. So for those of you wondering kind of where I've been for the last few weeks um, with no produced videos coming out, I've actually been in the process of moving house. I'm now in the new house. I'm in the new studio. And um, I'm looking forward to this. I've got a, a big wall of toys behind me. This will be the permanent live stream um, setup. I can also do my pre-recorded videos in this very same studio. Um, the, the house move was quite disruptive, but I've, I've used it to my advantage and basically, you know, setting up a new studio from scratch. I bought some new equipment. I, I, I it's a bit of a tight space, but the way I have it laid out, um, is just going to, um, help the production flow when it comes to producing videos. So I want to say a quick low, hello to all the people I'm seeing here in the chat, um, Tony Robles, Gojatron, Keith Knight, Scuba Pete. I think we saw Ken from Toy Connections there. Uh, Bjorn, Gerardo Connor. Um, and we have a super chat. Thank you very much. Uh, the Canuck. It says, uh, not as rich as Sal, but here's a few shekels to support our nasty habit. More Sergeant Slaughter is always better. Yo, Joe, and more Valiverse. Let's rock. Yes, we will be talking about um, Sergeant Slaughter later on tonight. So, um, which is why I have the vintage one here on the table. Um, uh, Grindhead Jim. Michael Schaefer, good to see you. Keith Chaos, that's a new one. Um, all right, so... As we go through this live stream tonight, we are going to have a guest joining us about 30 minutes or so in, 30 or 40 minutes in. Um, but I wanted to, to, I almost feel as like this is the return of the Analog Toys live stream. Um, you know, not the 3POA podcast, the traditional Analog Toys live stream where it's me here on the camera with a table full of toys discussing a topic that I'm kind of passionate about in the toy world. So I do have a guest joining me a little bit later on. Um, and that guest happens to be Sal from Two Cents Toys, my, my, my good friend. He's just uh, told me he'd just woken up from a food coma, so I'm going to let him digest his food and, and jump in a little bit later on. Now, I'm here to talk today about... Well, first of all, we're going to go through the announcements and product reveals from the recent um, Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified live stream. Um, that I think was on Tuesday of this week, I believe it was. Um, but then we're going to get into some more of the topics around the price hikes, the environmentally uh, friendly plastic-free packaging, which is probably where I'm going to bring Sal in to talk around the, the price hikes. So first of all, let's kick things off by going through the G.I. Joe Classified announcements from the other day. There was a, a lot of... I'm reluctant to say new stuff. There was a lot of repaints. That's how they kicked off the stream. Um, but just to kind of keep you all up to speed with what's going on here today, I have a second camera set up here so I can show you close-ups of the original versions of some of the, the figures that they showed today. So there's the original Recondo. Um, I've got most of the figures here. I'm probably not even going to talk about the... Um, Python Patrol Trooper or Officer, whatever it was, because I have no interest in it. I didn't even um, grab photos of that particular um, of that particular figure from the announcement. So, all right, kicking us off, first of all, the first announcement was, let me just remove that, um, a repaint of, and a slight retool, of snake eyes and timber so we've had two versions 
of this Snake Eyes already. We got the 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 zero zero edition, the deluxe version, which I own. I I, I pre ordered that um, back when it was first announced, and then of course we have the um, retail release version that I have here on the table. Then we got uh, Commando Snake Eyes with Timber in a two pack. Um, so this is kind of a, a, a repaint of the retail release version um, of the first Snake Eyes that they produce, and then a repaint of Timber, which came in the um, the pack with Commando Snake Eyes. And you see here, they're going for a bit more of an olive color on the pants. I do believe this is a new head sculpt because the visor does look quite longer. Um, and if you look closely, let's see if we can uh, zoom in here. Whoops, where am I going? He's got different boots. Different boots on, uh, on Snake Eyes there. For the, with it being the 40th anniversary of G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, and this line really course correcting and starting to do well, I didn't think it was a very good idea to come straight out of the gate with a repaint announcement. Um, I, I did say when they released the, uh, when they first announced the commando Snake Eyes and Timber, I know Timber became Snake Eyes sidekick when he was still a commando, but from childhood, um, I remember that it was version two Snake Eyes that came with Timber. So it, I, I never quite understood why they, they first of all, did the Commando Snake Eyes with Timber. But here they are, I suppose, correcting that, but by giving us um, another repaint, which I don't necessarily think is a great idea. Uh, Gerard O'Connor, thank you very much for the kind super chat. He says, killer looking studio set up, my man. Hope the cats weren't left behind. No, the cats came first, actually. We moved the cats into this house um the day before we officially moved in um so yeah i'm I, i've got to do a little bit of tweaking here in in the in the studio but i'm liking this setup i have a collection room um over there which is primarily all of my vintage toys i'm going to be doing a collection tour video i'm going to film that today probably edit tomorrow um so you'll get that on patreon hopefully tomorrow so primarily it's the um the vintage toys in there and the modern in here kind of there's a little bit of modern in the collection room and there is a bit of vintage here like my very small uh, ghostbusters collection but there we go so in the chat what does everyone think about um this repaint of snake eyes and timber are you going to be getting it um let me know in the chat if if, if you like this i don't hate it I just don't think they should have kicked off the stream with a repaint. But I was not exactly sure. I, I was not prepared. Yep, so Jeremy Jernigan, easy pass. I, I would like to get the timber, but I don't care if it comes from this set or from the Commando 2-pack. I'm actually hoping when I'm at Joe Fest someone's just selling timber loose and I can just pick up the timber. So, yeah, a lot of people saying, um, ooh, a lot of people, hard pass, unnecessary. Yeah, um, I'm agreeing with, with a lot of you guys here. So, yeah, when I say I don't think they should kick off the stream with a repaint, I was not prepared for um, for the stream to be full of repaints. So... Next, we get into their second wave of retro carded figures, even though a lot of people haven't yet got the first wave of retro carded. And they kicked it off here with another repaint of Zartan. I do believe that the original Zartan, um, as in the original classified series Zartan, I've got him right here, is one of the best figures they've done so far in the classified range. To make him wretch, so I'm really not sure what direction Hasbro are going in 
with this retro collection. Because initially it seemed as though they were taking classified figures and redoing the deco so that they looked more like the original action figures. Because the action figures weren't exactly accurate to the Sumbo cartoon. What they've done here is they've made Zartan more accurate to the Sumbo cartoon as opposed to the figure, which is why he's got green eyes. He had green eyes in the cartoon. This is now our third Zartan. There was a Comic Con, I think it was a Comic Con exclusive. This is a hard pass for me, but the issue I kind of have with this is by making him more cartoon accurate as opposed to action figure accurate. I was of the understanding that the Super 7, 7 inch range were doing the cartoon interpretations of these G.I. Joe characters and that the Hasbro Retro Collection were doing six inch recreations pretty much of the vintage action figures. So you see this one kind of blurs the line. It's like, as soon as they gave him green eyes, I was like, why isn't this over in that Super 7 line that I'm not interested in not buying? So, um, uh, Tomu Productions here says that um, this is not a color changing Zartan. I don't think they mentioned that in the stream. I have watched the stream twice, but I must admit I don't always pay that much attention to what's being said as opposed to what I'm looking at on screen. Um, I don't think he is color changing, but I'm I can't say that for certain. Um, but yeah, again, chat, is this something you need to pick up? Uh, are you are you excited for it? Is it a pass for you? Um, let me know your thoughts in the in the comments and we'll move on to another repaint. Storm Shadow. Now, I have the original version of Storm Shadow right here. Here's the action figure version. As you can see, cloth wraps around the forearms and um, no gloves on the hand. I really liked the, the version, the, the last pre-order that they announced, which looked very, very similar to this. Pinless joints, a great sculpt, a really good figure. Um, but some people seem to be unhappy that he had um, armor on his forearms and, and archery gloves. It wasn't. 100% classic. I, I didn't mind that figure, though. Personally, I'm probably going to prefer this one. I'm waiting to see what his accessories are like. There are some changes in the deco on the accessories, I think. Um, I don't know what you call it. The feathers on the end of the arrows here are white. I think they were red on the other figure. The problem here is... They're announcing this as a pre-order for release in 2023 when people haven't even got the last pre-ordered Storm Shadow figure yet. If people prefer this. They might just cancel that pre-order. Hasbro might get stuck with a lot of leftover stock of the last pre-order Storm Shadow. I also think it's a little bit irresponsible of, of the company to, um, to put this out as a pre-order when customers haven't got the last Storm Shadow that they announced. Um, people are just building up and building up a laundry list of pre-orders as opposed to actually having figures in their collections. Um, Drew G um, says, hey, guys, and Tony, love you guys. Been out drinking with my mate tonight, so I'll catch this a bit later. I know it's going to be good. <laughs> awesome, Drew. Have a have a drink or two for me, mate, and uh, enjoy the replay. Um Yes, Toy Connections says this one's nice if you didn't pre-order the first one, in, in my opinion. Um, as I said, I'm waiting to see the accessories. I didn't pre-order the first one. I'm not really buying a lot of classified stuff, although this one and Spirit were, were, were sorry, the last Storm Shadow and the Spirit that they announced were ones that I did particularly want to get. So... Um, Again, what, what does the chat think here? Are you uh, are you pre-ordering this? Not interested in another repaint? Um, James Wade, yes, the whole business of pre-orders is getting way out of hand, in my opinion. 
I completely agree, especially when I, I do understand why these you know smaller sort of boutique companies do it. They they have to do it to be able to compete against a company like Hasbro. Um, but a company like Hasbro, I don't have an issue with them doing pre-orders, but when they're doing pre-orders for stuff that's not going to be available until March 2023, it's too much. Like they're, they're, they're taking your money way, way too early. It's like get the last round of pre-orders into collectors' hands before you start asking them um, to pre-order more stuff. Um, Scuba Pete says, Stormy is a maybe if he sees it in stores. Did you pre-order the previous one, Scuba? Um, I, I'm thinking I'm going to be more inclined to get this one, as I said, dependent on the uh, accessories. So, right, let's move on to the next repaint. Let's take a look at this. This of... of visual disaster so i was still i was still a kid who was playing with gi joe slash action force when tiger force came out i was about 10 or 11 years old and i remember seeing it in the stores and thinking oh that is gaudy i don't want any of that i didn't i wasn't into python patrol i wasn't into tiger force as a 10 year old playing with this stuff so now I really don't want it. This is a very, very lazy repaint because although we did get Duke in Tiger Force, we never got the Ram Cycle in Tiger Force. This is simply them taking, you know, only the second vehicle they've made in the line. If you count that Cobra Coil motorcycle um, that came with the Baroness. This is the only other vehicle they've done in the range. This is not a bad vehicle, I, I think. It does not need to be done in, in Tiger Force colours. It just doesn't. And it looks absolutely hideous, in my opinion. Absolutely hideous. Um, Jim Largo, mate, you and I are on the same page. That Tiger Force cycle is horrible visually. It absolutely is. Um. Yeah. So are people going to be getting this? What's everyone's thoughts on this? Um, damn, red barrels on a minigun. What the actual... Um, I'm pretty sure that the original Ram cycle ended up on clearance. So I don't think this will end up on clearance because it's a Target exclusive. So... But I do think the, the, the important thing to mention about, I'm going to backtrack here slightly. The important thing to mention about Zartan and Storm Shadow, these are going to be part of the retro collection. So the retro collection card backs, which we're going to get onto a little bit later on, because that whole concept of the original styled retro card backs with, you know, the bubble and the card, it's um, it's going to be a thing of the past before we even real uh, before too long. It really is going to be a thing of the past because of the plastic free packaging. So we don't have kind of much further um, to go with this line. And, and I I wish they would tell tell us like are these going to be the last two retro collection figures? Maybe we'll get two more before the year's out. I don't know. But by twenty twenty three. Hasbro is going to go full plastic-free packaging. Um, they, they've said that. So, yeah, Tiger Fast King Eric. That's correct. Um, Ken at Toy Connection says, if they've done the Tiger Paw, Tiger Force Ferret. Um, it would be a tougher decision, but I guess they decided not to tool one up. I, I, I would love to see them do a ferret. Um, I probably still wouldn't get it in Tiger Force colours because, uh, as I said, 10-year-old Tony didn't like Tiger Force. 44-year-old Tony has no interest. I like the classic versions of the characters and the vehicles. Okay, where are we up to with the reveals? 
what what is what is this all about um two pack of a couple of blue ninjas easy easy pass for me a really easy pass um uh, Beyond Jorgensen says, um, it, it'd rather it be not. Yeah, yeah, I would prefer Night Force. Night Force would be better. But, um, oh, James Salzberg, is this an Amazon exclusive, is it? Um, wow. Ashman, 55. These were the best things announced in the whole stream. Yeah, if, if you want some ninjas, but this time I know there, you know, there's there's a big kind of ninja subplot throughout all of the G.I. Joe mythology, but I'm not interested. I, I want I want the characters that have the backstories. You know, when if you're gonna give us army builders, give us army builders that we haven't already got like cobra eels snow serpents not this stuff um i'm sure this female ninja um the tooling has been borrowed from another figure so yeah they they, they can do that if they want but <laughs> um ah akiko there we go bobby o'collin says it's just um I, I knew it was a recolor of the red ninja but i i had a feeling the other figure was was recolored. There you go. It was a Kiko. So, all right. Now we get to what was probably the biggest announcement of the entire stream. Sergeant Slaughter. I'm really pleased to see the G.I. Joe version of Sergeant Slaughter in the classified range. Um, as I said, this is one that I... Um, this is a version that I had as a child. Brief. I made a whole video about this. Um, nothing against Sarge. I didn't particularly like the Triple T. So after getting it for my birthday and not being overly impressed with it, we took it apart, put it back in the box, took it to the toy shop and swapped it for the uh, for the Havoc. But there's the version of Sarge, uh, pretty much the version of Sarge that they're doing here in the classified line. So um, the black tank top and the whistle, um, it doesn't have... This version that came with the Triple T didn't have the American flag. I think he had the American flag on the mail-away version. Um, the camouflage pants, all of that kind of stuff. So, so that's um, that's the Sarge there. Now, they said that the hat was removable, the glasses were removable, the whistle was removable, and he, they said he's going to come packed in with something in a cardboard box, which they think is really cool. My immediate thought, because they are doing little bits of new retro pack, uh, um, three and three quarter inch O-ring styled figures this creative team are doing as well. I have a sneaking suspicion that they're going to sell this figure like that and he's going to be packed in with a three and three quarter inch O-ring version. That's a theory I have anyway. I'm not confident on that. But if they do, I don't think that's a good move because there's a lot of three and three quarter inch collectors who don't like the six inch stuff, vice versa. Doesn't really make sense to me. Um, they may as well put him in the plastic free packaging and make it a mail away and, you know, order it online only and you get delivered, get it delivered to your house in a white box with a Hasbro stamp on the outside. Um, but again... The the fists on this figure concern me. I hope he comes with alternate hands, but we don't get many of them. I'm, I think the the only figures I can think of that have come with alternate hands are Cobra Commander and the deluxe version, first version of Snake Eyes. I could be wrong, um, but they're not doing a lot of figures with alternate hands. If he just comes with fists and, and no alternate hands, that's not going to be a very smart move, I don't think. Now, again, are they trying to make him look like the cartoon or are they trying to make him look like the action figure? Because he doesn't look like real-life Sarge. If you want real-life Sarge, you get the Valiver Sergeant Slaughter. His proportions here look very much like 
they're trying to make him look like the cartoon version. And yeah, Grindhead Jim says, um, Sergeant Slaughter skips leg day is an episode I must have missed. <laughs> Absolutely. I have a theory that this figure is based on the gun ho body with the torso from the Amazon roadblock, which was in the tank top. And this is one of the worst figures in the classified line because the body is too big, the legs are too skinny. When you put him there next to Zartan, he's way, way bigger. Um, yeah. And again, if if they're going for the cartoon version, why isn't this over in the Super 7 line with the cartoon accurate figures that they're doing over there? I don't know. Hmm. That was the, I believe that was the last of the announcements. Yes, that was the last of the announcements before they got into... Um, showing us some actual product from the previous kind of pre-order announcement. So I think this is a uh, an excellent spot in the live stream to bring in my buddy Sal from Two Cents Toys. I hope he's ready to go because here he is. Are you ready, sir? Sir, I was born ready. That's why they call me Sal. <laughs> Today I was born Vador. Thank you. Thank you. Good to know. Good to know. Absolutely. All right, Sal. Um have you got any thoughts on the classified Sergeant Slaughter before we move on to some of the actual uh, product photos? Hmm. No, sir. I don't like it. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I see how bulky he is. Like, I don't know humans that are shaped that way. I mean, you see him on the internet, but he's very, like, all, all I see when I see him is, like, he, he's going to be what I call the Genesis figure. So when you hear that, in the middle of the night, you're going to wake up and you're going to walk out and it's going to be his fault that all the other figures fell over on your shelf. Right. Although all those people on my Marvel Legends video I did about figure stands told me that I just don't know how to pose and figures don't fall over. Oh, right. Just, yeah. before, just before I started War Stories, I was talking to Michael about... Well, Michael was talking to me about this figure, which is the... Yeah, um, Captain Carter. Captain Carter, yeah. Um, I've got this on a, on a stand... And as my, me and Michael were having the chat just before we went live on War Stories, I was like, oh, yeah, I've got it right here. And I turned around, and she had fallen over, even with a stand. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's uh, uh, my second sister, Inquisitor, from the Black Series. She falls over. She's got the big plastic traffic cone cape, and she has these weak yep. little ankles, and is boom, all the time. But yeah, yeah. To, to address the Sergeant Slaughter thing, like, you know, Bobby came out in support of it and, you know, Sarge is his own man. You know, if he wants a toy made of him, he can go to three different companies to do it. You know, I'm not going to harsh his, you know, harsh on him at all. I'm going to harsh mm -hmm. on the fans that are like, Battleverse is done. Sarge is gone. And it's like, uh huh. Is that, is that, is that what you, that, that's what you think was selling the line with Sarge? Okay. I'm, I mean, I, I saw the boxes. I, I saw how much product came out of every figure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Keep thinking that. Keep thinking that. Um, I, I I haven't heard any of that sort of scuttlebutt sale, mainly because I've kind of left every, uh, every cesspit toxic Facebook toy group I can think of. Mm -hmm. um, but, it, but obviously it doesn't surprise me. But if you think, if not you, Sal, sorry, right. these right. people right. are saying this stuff. Yeah. If they think that this signifies the end of Valiverse, what they need to do is go on to eBay, search Valiverse, look at the sold listings, and search for highest priced. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, the slammer that was a, a limited edition of 500, that's going for some big money. But of the you know, the, the normal release figures that have been put out by Valiverse. The highest price figures are Steel Brigade, Swarm, Wasp Raiders. Yep. Not Sergeant Slaughter. Nope. No. Also, I'm, I, I can't say for sure. This is pure conjecture on my part. But 
you know, admittedly, I'm not someone who gives half a crap about Sergeant Slaughter. Um, didn't know him from wrestling. Don't care about the vintage figure. The only reason I even care about Sergeant Slaughter is because of Aliverse, and I, I like version two quite a bit. But I love version two, I'm, Sarge. I'm convinced, based on what we were seeing with Classified, they were never going to do Sarge. They only did it because Bobby did it. Um, I. That's a pretty solid theory. Uh, that's um, that's a very solid theory. I, I I would tend to agree with you there. I mean, um, Jeremy Jernigan, thank you for the super chat. He says, uh, I just don't understand why we're getting all of these Tiger Force figures before we've seen Rock and Roll, Alpine, Ripcord. Uh, I, I I agree, Jeremy. Look, I, I don't have an issue with the character choices in Tiger Force, like, um. I, to me, it would have made sense to have done um, Alpine and Bazooka in the same wave, as opposed to Bazooka and Rakondo. See, um, but, but I, the, I don't get why we're not getting the original versions. Um, that the people I don't think many G. people... Sorry, go ahead, Sal. So it just proves that people in G.I. Joe don't know G.I. Joe. Yeah. So it's like... <laughs> like I mean... So they announced the first Storm Shadow and Spirit at the same time. Okay. Like, I think that was more of a fluke. Yeah. But, like, come on. You know, Alpine and, and Bazooka were, like, best buds. So. Yep. And, I mean, maybe they're being really clever. Uh, probably not. It's probably, a, like you say, a fluke. Because if, if they brought out Outback, Rakondo, Bazooka, all of these characters, if they bring out the original versions first and then try and do Tiger Force exclusives at Target... Oh, they're not going to sell. They're not going to sell. By doing it this way around, people are going to get it because it's the only six-inch version of Rakondo or whoever. Right. And then later on, they're like, ah, you know. Yep. It's that, a, it's that, it's that, that's when, like, FOMO bites you in yep. the ass because... It's that old FOMO rearing its head. You, you def they're they're not spending all this money on tooling, like to yeah you know, to make Rakondo's hat. That's that, that's quite a large tool in, in comparison to some other accessories. They're not spending that money on the tooling to just use it once. You're going to get a classic Rakondo. Mm -hmm. Um, Envargo ninety seven. Thank you for the super chat. Just dropped by to show some love. Unfortunately, I can't stay with all the recent rumors regarding them. I'm done with classifieds. Just going to focus on vintage and Valiverse from here on out. There we go. I'm, I'm just saying, Bobby's not getting rid of his window. So, just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we will. We'll be. We'll be talking about that, Sal, definitely for sure. Mm -hmm. um, Scott Hughes, thank you for the super chat. He says better options would have been Airborne, Firefly, Snowjob, Scrap Iron, Doc Ripcord, but weird generic Blue Ninja. No, yeah, yeah. Look, I, I I agree with that. I would like each wave to focus on a certain year. Uh, a bit like what you've done here, Scott. You have listed off figures that all pretty much are from the same year. I think this is like the 1983 or 84 line um, you've listed off there. I I'm not against them sort of jumping around to different years with characters, but I don't think they should do it within each wave. Um, you know, they should, you know, the next wave of pre-orders they announce, it should all be, say, from 1985. You know, and then they can jump to 88 if they want or, or whatever. But um, that's how I like waves of, of figures. The very, very first time I ever bought Star Wars Black Series, and I made a video about it, it was for the 40th anniversary of uh, Empire Strikes Back. And we got um, Luke in Bespin Fatigues, Yoda, Han in his Bespin outfit, but then you got Leia in a Hoth outfit, and 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 I, I was and I said that in my video at the time. It's like for this 40th anniversary, for this wave, why aren't they all from Hoth or all from Bespin? Why did it have to be this this mixture? Um, oh, that insult to injury for the their archive series. They did Luke and Han in their Hoth gear, but not Leia and Bespin. Yeah, exactly, right. exactly. Uh, Embargo97, thank you for another super chat. He says, uh, also loving the new analog toy streaming setup. So am I. I've got new lights in here. I've got two cameras. I've got a good microphone. I'm 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 liking this. And um and it, something I learned by accident. I, I I've got a Mac 
uh, MacBook Pros that I use for the live stream with, with the trackpad. And I found by having a mouse, I can, I'm actually much better at controlling the, the, the stream and putting the different, um, different cameras and, and whatnot up on there. It, it works a lot better for me. So um, should have done that a long time ago. All right, Sal, let's get into the product reveal images. So first of all, Bazooka. Mm. Have you got any thoughts here? Uh, um, we we established why they did Tiger Force first, which is the I don't know, I, the, I, why they bothered doing Tiger Force is beyond me. Like I, I guess you want to reuse the tool, that that's fine, but you know, just do the original one and call it a day. Like, just move on to another figure, and I, it, I it's hard for me to justify their actions because it sounds like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth because it's like what I'll accept from like a company like a small company like Bobby or like uh, Stan Solo Creation or something it's like I'll accept reuse from them because they're a small company just getting started like mm -hmm. they're reused to you know make their kind of make their overhead so they can do new tooling they're a, what is it like four billion dollar like they made four billion in profits last year and it's like so you can't afford the 40 grand for a new torso yeah or so i don't know that it, it doesn't add up to me uh I, I have the vintage bazooka i like that look a lot more um i and you know what just go nuts you make the 90s bazooka where he has like the fisherman's hat and the grenade strap around his wrist just do that one yeah, yeah. So I've so I've got the, the, the original bazooka here. Um comes with his olive drab pants, olive drab uh, helmet cover. See the um is it the New England Patriots that shirt? I'm not up on my American yeah, football. That was uh, their Patriot the jersey from the eighties. Now do you know even when I was a kid in the early eighties or the mid eighties, even then I was like, why did they call him bazooka? When he hasn't got a bazooka, he's got a rocket launcher. <laughs> Maybe so, really like, it, I don't know. It looks more like a, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, a law, mm -hmm. a light anti-tank weapon. So, um, Brian Dillingham, thank you very much for the Dillinghamism. Much, much appreciated. Um, so, what other... What other images have we got here? So, I like I like the torso articulation on this much better than the, than the normal um, the sort of I don't know what what do you call that this this uh, cut that we do here? Um, I call that an ab crunch. Yeah, um, and it, he has what's called a diaphragm cut, or as I call it, the valiverse articulation because <laughs> he's pinless, um, or at least in the arm yeah. anyway. So, I don't know. Seems like someone might be copying someone's homework. I'm not saying that Bobby <laughs> created that articulation, but it's kind of weird that they're kind of doing that now, you know? Especially when you think that the the, the ab crunch, like, the, to me, the ab crunch kind of articulated joint works well on a character like Captain America because he has the straight lines of his costume. Right, you can hide it really, much really like we've got, Yeah, much like we've got the straight lines of the number 14 here. Mm -hmm. Like of, of, of all the different figures they're putting out in classified, the one figure that they give the, the diaphragm joint to is the one that could have hidden the ab crunch the best. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's weird. Like some, some figure lines are really hit and miss with that diaphragm movement. Like some, like the, the Marvel Legends Hulk doesn't get a lot of movement forward, but he gets a lot backwards and it's kind of, kind of weird, but It'll be interesting to see what happens with that guy because just looking at how much overhang he has on the sides, I'm not seeing a whole lot of uh, like movement really. But who yeah. knows? Maybe because it's classified, there will be loosey goosey. So, <laughs> well, a, a lot of my um, a lot of my figures with Ab Crunch are, are loosey goosey. Um, the very first Snake Eyes, the, the deluxe one that came in the big black stupid card uh, cardboard box. 
Mm -hmm. That's loose as hell. This figure straight out of the pack. Oh, sorry, you can't see. Yeah, yeah Arctic um, Storm Shadow. Arctic Storm Shadow was really, really loose. Yeah. Um, That's some of them are like that. Uh, like I'll, I'll pull a figure out of the box and I'll I'll hear like a, almost a snap click when I move it and then all of a sudden like they they just flop back and forth. Yeah. So. A world mode of cardboard. Thank you very much for the super chat. He says, um, with all these as pre-orders, there is no way that someone can say these are for kids. I do not think a kid will want to wait until 2023 for a toy. Um, they they aren't for kids. There's only there's only a couple of crackpots on the internet that um, that in one video say that you know collectors you know are, are such a small part of the market they're insignificant. And then in another video, they say that collectors are 20% of the market. Um, these are definitely aimed at um, at the adult collector. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kids I, uh, today, even most adults today, you, you and myself included, won't care about Tiger Force Bazooka. So. No, no, they won't. Um, so here we've got Bazooka in the package. Um <laughs> Yeah, enjoy it while it lasts. Actually, being able to see the figure in the box. That, um, what is he stepping over? Oh, in the artwork. Yeah, because that looks uh, like a very uh, unique looking rock. That's a, a an explosion coming. He's firing his bazooka and farting at the same time. Ah, oh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why he's firing his bazooka downward if that's where he's heading, but okay. Uh, mate, so some of the some of the art for not just what was announced in this most recent wave, but right throughout classified. Some of the art's really good. If you saw the art on the box for um, Stalker, mm -hmm. man, that artist doesn't even know how a soldier's supposed to wear a beret. It mm -hmm. looked absolutely ridiculous. And we're going to talk a little bit more about some art as we go along today. Yeah. Um, Jeremy Jernigan, thank you for another kind super chat. He said, the sculpt is great. Accessory is great. Just give us the original aesthetic. I would probably, I've not probably, when we get the original version of this, I'll pick it up because although Bazooka is not one of my favorite characters from childhood, I love the action figure because of the way the figure popped on a toy shelf. He was very military, but that red shirt gives him that really. It, in a in a way, I remember when it gives when all the bad Bobby, guys something to aim at. <laughs> yeah, that's why the Punisher has his white skull. You know, that's right. Um, I I can't remember if it was actually on your iconic on stream last year when when Bobby announced the Desert Rat, or whether I spoke to him afterwards, but. He put the Union Jack patch on the body armor mm -hmm. in red, white, and blue. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I said it in the stream or if I spoke to him afterwards. I said, oh, Bobby, I, I wore um, the Union Jack flag on my body armor right where you put it, but mm -hmm. it wasn't red, white, and blue. It was in, a, you know, like a camouflage version with different right. tans and browns. Mm -hmm. And Bobby was like, oh, I'll, I'll change it. I was like, no, don't change it. Because this is still a toy line, and that little pop of color really adds something to the character and makes it. I believe the colored version of the flag looked much more displayable on a shelf than the camouflage right. version. So I didn't want him to change that. Um, right, it's something that catches your eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only you know, it's only a, a small little piece, but really catches your eye, and that's kind of kind of where I'm at with um with bazooka. So. Um, all right, next we have Oh, Tom Rekondo. Selleck Oh, is that who that is? <laughs> the, the Circus Ringmaster moustache Now, um, I, I, I wasn't able to watch Laser Pants Live the other day um, I wasn't able to watch Laser Pants Live live I had to watch it later because I was at work Um there was some interesting discussion around this this hat, and uh, yes, I'm going to make fun of Ryan here. He thought this was a cavalry hat. Jeremy Jernigan quite rightly corrected him. Um, this is known as a slouch hat. Mm -hmm. it, it's very frequently associated with Australian the Australian military because 
Australians wear it. It is the ceremonial headdress for most regiments in the Australian Army. Um, the band around it is actually called a, a puggery. It's a separate piece. And, like, you know, so what is, is Rocondo Australian? Now, on his G.I. Joe file card, he's from Wisconsin. Rocondo, the original that I've got right here, was released into the Palatoy Action Force range in 1985. And he came with a recolor of the SAS Silent Attack Canoe. They redid it in, um, um, in a khaki color. Um, I said canoe, didn't I? I meant kayak. Um, yeah, potato. Yeah. When Rakondo was brought into the Palatoy Action Force line, his file card was changed, and he is an Australian character. So I'm yeah, owning it. He's, he's he's my Aussie in the line now. I desperately, desperately, desperately want this hat accessory. But I don't want it in blue because in the Australian military, have a guess, Sal, who wears a blue slouch hat in the Australian military in their dress uniform? Mm, I'm going to say the Australian Navy. The Air Force. Air Force. Very clear. Oh, okay. I yep. guess that makes sense. That, to me, is an Australian Air Force hat. And that's not what I want. I want an Australian Army hat. Um so I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna wait for the uh, um I'm gonna wait for the eventual re-release of this figure in the classic design um with the Australian slouch slouch out. I'm gonna pick up two. I do like his weapon. It kind of looks like a mini fourteen or something mm -hmm. with a couple of wraps around it. But um oh, and a removable uh, magazine. I see. Wonder where they might yeah. pick up that idea. Yeah, well, a, a removable magazine, but if you have a look, it doesn't look like his pouches are big enough to hold a spare magazine. No. It doesn't come with a spare magazine. Um, that magazine, well, looks like it might barely fit. Yeah. Like, I'm looking, yeah. so I'm seeing like a hard ring around it, and I'm looking at the magazine well, and I'm like, those rounds aren't going to get chambered. They're way too low. Yeah, yeah. But, you yeah. know, I guess that's what happens when you design Nerf guns for a living. <laughs> I make them out of PVC, yeah. Um, all right, let's take a look at the packaging here for a moment. So contrasting with Bazooka, I love this artwork. This artwork, this looks like Jesse Ventura in Predator. Yeah. So, but because it's That's Tiger right, Force, as as Force. Yeah, yeah. Because it's Tiger Force, you're going to need to get that Tiger Force repaint of the Ram cycle so you can give him a bright red um, right. old paint. <laughs> um, but the one thing I really like here, from what I can remember, I'm, I'm almost certain on this, is the original Tiger Force Recondo that was sold to us back in the 80s was not available on a single figure card back. He at, was actually the pilot of the Tiger Fly, which is the recolor right. of. The Tiger Force version Dragon of the Dragonfly. That would that was about included that. in the artwork here, flying yeah. past the sun, which I think is a nice little, a nice little nod to it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was about to ask. I was like, is that supposed to be the Dragonfly there on the side? Uh, it, it it is. If if you if if you watch the Hasbro stream again, they actually show a really good image um, of the artwork, and it's it's not only the Dragonfly, it's the the Tigerfly. You actually yeah, yeah. see the um the camouflage deco on it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. No, if they had any sort of bravery, they would give you an alternate head where he has a he has a little lip packed in. That's what he kind of looks like on the artwork there on the side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what do um? I'm interested to know what the chat think about this. Who's who's pre ordered this in the chat? Because um, I I I like this figure, and I've almost sort of I've almost sprung for it a few times, but. I want the original deco. I want I want this version um, of Rakondo. So the only thing I would like is the torso, like the torso and head. Like I'm not interested in the tiger pants at all, but I do like yeah. the the kind of dark blue, almost black shirt. Yep. So, but I'm not spending twenty five dollars for a torso. So. Yeah. 
Uh, Tony Robles, thank you very much for the super chat. It says, uh, when I say Recondo, I laugh because you can always reuse real world guns. They will never reuse those Wave 1 guns. <laughs> no, they won't reuse those Wave 1 guns ever again. Unless they want to make a, a, a role play like hairdressing set for a young girl and they can give them, um, they can, what, well, oh my God, my brain's not working. Who is the, the figures in the first wave? Duke, Scarlet. Roadblock, Snake Eyes, and was Cobra Commander in the first wave? No, Destro. No, Destro. You, you should know that. <laughs> Yeah, I know you're right. I was thinking Destro was second wave, but that was Daddy Destro. Yeah. Now my um uh my poor memory just ruined my comedic timing there. I was trying to make a joke about Roblox hair straightness, but forgot who Roblox what Roblox name was. So he, has so, a, he has a big ass or I'm sorry, he has a big set of hair straighteners for having no hair. Yeah, yeah. Um okay. Oh boy. That is not how you... I'm, I'm going to start with this image here. Yeah. Give me your opinion, Sal. Um, well, I think someone on that design team really likes Pandora. Um, and I get it. She's a dreadnought. I understand the buzzsaw. That was like their whole thing. Like they had weird weapons. Like, who was it? Uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, the dude with the, the red cutoff jacket had like a giant like trident gun or something. Uh, monkey wrench. Monkey wrench. That's right. I kept wanting to say not Ripper. Ripper has like the uh, the uh, big size. He's got the, um, the jaws of life. The hydraulic yeah. jaws of life. Yeah. So, but Ripper, Ripper was my, always my favorite dreadnought. Um, you know, when it, when we talk about the action figures, not exactly the characters. Yeah. It, it won't surprise you to know that mine was Road Pig. Um, yep. He's got a cinder block sledgehammer. Um, so if they ever do road pig, I'm on board, but, yeah. um, no, I'm just, I, I don't care about Zorana or whatever her name is. I just, I just don't like when it, I have, I, I think I have, to, I have to double check, but I think I have all the dreadnoughts now in my vintage collection. I think Zartan was the only holdout and I got that from Matt Swafford. Um, yep. so I think I've got them all, but every time I have like, or I should say, I have had, I think, like, four Zaranas, and her, her O-ring keeps breaking every time I get her. And yeah. just, like, just like Zartan and uh, Xandar, you can't just unscrew them. It's not that simple. So Yeah, because of the color-changing thing, they, they actually Sonic welded the torso. But yeah. um, Toy Poloi, I can't remember actually how he did it, but Toy Poloi's mm -hmm. got a video where he actually oh, yeah. restrings a Zartan O-ring. Yeah. That's, um, uh, that's how I've, I've been fixing them. I got white elastic string and like kind of fished it around and all that. But yeah, I, I just the only reason she exists because that's a very kind of left field character for them to go with. The only reason she exists is because that's Emily's favorite character. Yeah, and and I I, I think I think the, the figure this I think this figure looks good, mm -hmm. but I was like. Why didn't we get a different Dreadnought first? You know, this wasn't one of the the core Dreadnought characters. You know, why didn't we get Buzzsaw or Ripper or Torch? Right. Um, I I would like to see those those three guys. Man, man if if they offered up two hundred dollars for those guys in a three pack with three Punisher motorcycles, mm -hmm. I'm all over. But it probably it wouldn't be two hundred bucks. It'd be Two thousand bucks. But... No, uh, coming to a Haslab near you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, I, like I get it. It's it's Zartan's uh, sister, I think, um, not cousin. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is his sister, and uh, Zarana and and Zandar was his brother. Right. Um, and yeah, I, whereas I, the other Dreadnoughts were just Dreadnoughts, they weren't right. relations. This is when we're getting all kind of Force Awakens on everything. Right, and I, I just uh, like. It looks nice. I can see that she's pinless. That's good. I've seen double jointed elbows on a female. Hasbro's finally doing that. That's been one of my complaints for a few years now. So it's fine. Well, this is pretty much. 
yeah, from the from the waist down, this is Lady J. Mm -hmm. Lady J was pinless, wasn't she? I don't know. I, I've never bought her. I couldn't get past the haircut. I've got it here. Yeah, Lady J was pinless. Yeah, yeah. This is um obviously the, the the boots are different. She's actually got spurs, which don't really make a lot of sense. But anyway, well, you um, know, you should just be able to kick the motorcycle. You know, make it go faster. <laughs> Now, while I do like the look of it, and I do, I really like the face sculpt and the hair. However, this looks like she has a vagina on the top of her head, or, or one of those. Yeah, you know, I, I know what they were trying to do, but they did not execute that very well. I'm just oh, waiting no. for like the inevitable, like Amazon exclusive, where she has earrings. Yep. No. Yep. That's 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 going to happen for sure. Now, I mentioned earlier that we were going to talk a little bit more about some of the artwork here, right? The mm -hmm. artwork for this figure. Ugh. Why are they trying to make her look like Harley Quinn? That is the smile that Harley Quinn has in Batman the Animated Series. Yeah. I... I, mm, I, I I think I, I think I put it in our group that I was like I don't know why like she has like an anime character Harley Quinn looking artwork I, I I'm I'm assuming that they're you know clearly different artists are doing the artwork but it's like why why like yeah because you see her hair as a figure like it's like okay like it's it's dyed orange dyed red or whatever in the artwork it looks like it's just being hit by light the way <laughs> the light is so it's like. Did the artist do that? And then they were like, oh, that'll be cool. Let's do it to the figure. Or did the artist misinterpret the figure? Or Yeah. I don't Look, know. Look, it's not a deal breaker for me because if I, I, I do, I really like this figure. I'm not going to pick it up because I'm kind of getting out of, of classifieds and I'm actually slowing down collecting just due to space reasons. But um, the artwork's not a deal breaker for me because modern toys I take out of the box. If you're an inbox collector, this artwork might bother you, but it doesn't really matter because if you're an inbox collector, your days are numbered anyway. So yeah. we'll get on to that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Oh, my lordy. It's a nice skirt. Ahead, there. Like, I, I know why they did it. Because the vintage Dusty has his, you know, blouse tucked into his gun belt, but that's like with, when it comes to like updating modern things, that could have been something they could have gotten rid of. Because now he just has a plastic skirt; he has a tutu. Yeah, and I, I don't like the camo. I, it's, there's not there's nothing about this figure that I like, and I'm trying to figure out why his tr why his bipod is on top of his rifle. Well, the original, um, where's my mouse gone? Um, the original figure that I have here, mm -hmm. uh, it actually connects to the weapon at the top of the rifle. That's where the pivot point is. Uh, the slight little hole in the side of the rifle where the, the bipod clips in mm -hmm. is at the top of the rifle, not at the bottom. So I don't know whether they sort of literally copied this, but this is the original. Mm -hmm. um, actual real fabric um, on the back of the helmet, the Havelock or whatever it's called. Um, when they announced the... When they in, first announced this in the previous stream with the digital renders, right? Mm -hmm. I know Bobby didn't like the figure. I was really excited. I mean, there's a reason that I have Dusty on this T-shirt. I can't remember what company I got this T-shirt from, but I went on the website and they had tons of different um, G.I. Joe character art. You didn't, it wasn't just Dusty. They did all these different characters. Mm -hmm. I chose Dusty because he was one of my favorite action figures when I was a kid. Um, wasn't my favorite, but he was one. He was in my top 10 kind of thing. And I, and I loved um, the card art. I like this figure. Um, as I like the original vintage figure. I really liked... The digital render that they showed um 
I need to be very careful how I word this because there's going to be loads of trolls out there in the comments who are going to say, you know, it's, it's because of Desert Rat that I'm trying to shit on this figure. It's not. Because I actually, I wanted to get like three or four of these to mix in with my Desert Rat figures and have them in that awesome desert vehicle I got from the HM Forces toy range. Mm -hmm. This looks like a Honeycomb McFlurry. There are so many issues going on here. They should have used fabric for the Havelock on the helmet. Mm -hmm. um, the goggles, when they're on the face, are too close together. I, I'm going to pull up uh, another image here just for a moment. Um, let me... I'm going to stop that. I'm going to share another one. Share screen, window, boom. Oh, that's night and day. That is night and day. Isn't it? Look at the size of the uh, the goggle lens there compared to here. The colors you... I mean, even, even the face, he has that big like A-frame jaw. And there is just yeah. kind of like, I don't know. I don't know what that is. They have really screwed the pooch on this one. Um, Sal, mm -hmm. do you think that a so like okay? So he's he hasn't got a, a, he's not got a ton of equipment on him, right? right? He's got a couple of pouches on the front and a couple of pouches on the side mm -hmm. that don't look anywhere near big enough to carry spare magazines. So this guy's literally going into battle with. 30 rounds of ammo, and that's it. Right. But he's yeah. got... As a smart man would do, obviously. <laughs> well, well, unless, of course, they're all in his backpack, because that's how you do a fast magazine change. You right. empty yeah. a magazine, and then you go down on one knee, you take your backpack off, you unzip it, you rummage through all your MREs looking for a mag. He probably hasn't even put the rounds in it yet. He's going to have to put the rounds right. in, pull he, them out he, of the cardboard box, put them in the mag. He's got to do a cardboard um, reload. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are loads of places on his body where he can carry a knife. Why is it on his boot? Because it's Which cool. Is, do you think it's... Um, because it's cool, Tony. You just don't know what's cool. Oh, it's it, it might be cool, but it's not <laughs> practical. No, it's not. Anyone who's ever tried to... Like, I'm not even a huge fan of drop leg holsters. Trying to run in that shit. This whole thing, I can spin around on your leg front and back, and yep. I'm, I'm telling you that, that uh, you don't Navy SEALs and Green Berets don't have boot knives. It's okay. I mean, we're talking about we're talking about people who uh, you know gave Flint's pump action shotgun a break action, so right, mm. yeah, that's a I understand the aesthetics behind a boot knife. Like, oh, that, you know, because there's always that scene, like, they get disarmed and then all of a sudden, like, they're huddled down and they pull a knife out of their boot and they're like, oh, that's cool. But it's like, that's... I, I can't even imagine running with that thing. No, th that's my whole point. Trying to run with that thing on, on your boot, like... In the sand. Knife? In the uh, sand. Why not, like, why not have your knife on your knife? Why not have your knife on your belt? <laughs> um... Uh, Yes, the OG figure has a boot knife. I can understand that. But um it I think the point we're trying to make is that they're changing things, like they're doing updates, which is fine, but they're updating the wrong things. Yeah. Like yep. like I like with Storm Shadow, I overheard you talking about the, the gauntlets. I'm fine with the gauntlets. Like that that doesn't bother me. I'm like, cool. No, yeah, no, it didn't, didn't bother me at all. I, I, I didn't have any issues with that. The, the previous storm shadow that they announced at all. Yep. Why does he have two trigger hands? Because every G.I. Joe classified figure has two trigger hands. Do they? Every single one. Oh my of them. god, yep. they do. I never noticed. Huh. Every single one. Right. Because we're all left eye dominant right handed or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I so I do like uh, his name tapes. 
I like that they actually put something on them instead of leaving them blank. Yep. Um, because they very easily could have. But I, I don't like. So one of my things, and I understand, a hit of paint costs. You know, per hit of paint. You look at all the camo. You look at his face. He's got the camo. You look at the goggles. Then you look at his, at his his web gear up top, and there's no paint, nothing. So, when I see things like that, it makes me think of like the dollar store toys that I buy, like my bootleg videos, and how they'll have like you know a sash or something, and you can see all the detail, and nothing's painted on it. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah. So, yeah. no paint on his backpack, nothing. Ashman55 says, G.I. Joe was never designed to be realistic. It was a comic and a cartoon, so why it needs to be realistic confuses me. I I, I disagree with you, mate. Like, the, the cartoon is one thing. Fair enough. I grew up with the comics. Yes, there was some fantasy elements, but, like, in the early days of the comics, you go... You look at the origin of Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. You've got Tommy, Snake Eyes, and Stalker part of a long-range reconnaissance patrol in Vietnam, realistic weapons, large, large elements of G.I. Joe were based in reality. That's what made it so good. Certainly in the early years, okay, things changed, you know, into the 90s. But this figure isn't from the 90s. This figure is from 1985, I want to say. 84, 85, I think. Um Yes, they may have given him a, a, a boot knife then, but much in the way that James Bond movies had to evolve after the Bourne identity. If you're bringing this, if you're bringing this out for, for collectors today, yes, make it look like the original character, but they're updating some stuff. Update the right stuff. Right. Um, no. And I agree with you. This is coming from me, someone who adores 90 G.I. Joes. Like, give me the Mega Marines all day long. I'm all about it. Give me the pre give me Predacon, that four-armed alien. I would love to have one. I'm, I'm all yeah. about it. However, when I see things and it's like, again, they're updating the wrong things. That's the problem. Like, the double trigger hands. Like, why? I don't, I don't see how that's... Uh, uh, an unrealistic expectation that one might be a, uh, you know, just a, an open fist or a fist or something like that. So. Now. Hmm. Let's. Why is he doing duck lips? Um... Blowing a kiss, Tony? Should I be threatened? He, he, he is blowing a kiss. Okay. Is it just me? Or do, what's, what's going on with these goggles, Sal? Are those upside down? Like, the lenses look correct, but, like, the, the mount for the goggles looks upside down. I don't know. Uh, okay. I don't know. Something, something looks off. Hmm. Um, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. Who cares what they update? If it looks like the original has the same colors, I couldn't care less about a freaking boot knife. I'm happy for you. Yeah, but yeah, I'm 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 happy for you as well. You're you're one of the people who switches your brain off when you go and watch a movie. Um, I, <laughs> yeah. So is he supposed to have a camelback? A camelback. Yeah, that, that green that looks like the hydration tube to a camelback on the uh, right above. Oh yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, I hadn't noticed that. I wonder if I wonder if it's like in his backpack, maybe like maybe that's where it leads to. Um, I'm I'm assuming maybe. Yeah. See, that's a nice update. Something he should probably have. Yes, absolutely. That that's. A clever update. Um, I, 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 I like the GI Joe logo. I like the American flag on the chest. The name tag. Yeah, it's good. You know the the color. I, I'm still I'm hung up on his. What, what would you call that? Like custard yellow, I guess. Like honeycomb yellow. I call yeah. it. Well, this image doesn't look quite the same as this image. 
Right. Um, uh, that that 3D render though, th those colors were great. Yeah, so. yeah, and it's it's it, it's not. I'm, I'm hoping they revise it. I'm hoping they they continue to revise the colors. Um, uh, JC Barron says, "Does he come with the coyote?" No, that is a a different version of Dusty from the '90s. This is the earlier version. Uh, it does not come with the coyote. Um. Yeah. Um, I think I'd rather have the '90s version. Yeah. So, um, Chewy Ep nineteen. I hope I pronounced that right. Nineteen seventy six. For some reason, it's bugging me that he has bare hands instead of gloves. You know, the original had gloves. I used to wear gloves in the desert a lot because mm -hmm. it gets really hot in the desert. Yep. For, for anyone who's ever, you know. Never mind whether you've been in the military, right? If you've ever visited a really hot country when it's, you know, 45 degrees Celsius and you come out and, you know, you burn your hand on the car door as you try and open the car door or, you know, you mm -hmm. touch the bonnet or whatever. You even touch a black it's steering wheel. Exactly the same when you handle a metal rifle. You need to wear gloves. Yeah. But, hey, it, you know, kind of looks like the character. It's the right colours, so... Who cares? Right. Which, so here, the caveat being, like, if they wanted to do, and I know I was wearing those, I complained, I was like, if they just, you know, took the three and three quarter and blew them up to six, I'd buy them, which is, you know, mostly true. I do buy classified figures. Um, I just finally bought a barbecue the other day. Um, yeah. Because I was like, oh, he, he looks pretty cool. And I'd like to have an axe. Um, yeah. Like, if, if that's what they want to do, like, the retro card line is the place for this kind of this kind of dusty, you know. Yeah. But Arze Kaze, I agree. Um, Newcastle six 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 says, "How about a footloose figure in classified?" I would love to see uh, a footloose figure in in, in classified, mm -hmm. but because I like the concept of footloose, I was. It really excited by the artwork on the original card back when I got him in the 80s. And he was like one of the figures from that era where the actual figure disappointed me. I didn't like the way the helmet sat on his head. It was kind of, it, it sat really far back. He looked really bad with his helmet on. Um, I would I would love to see a modern version of... of um, a footloose in a six inch scale. I would like that. They should, you know uh, what? Let's let's swing for the fences. Bring a sneak peek. Let, let's have a sneak peek. Why not? Yeah. We need a guy with a giant periscope. Yeah, well, I mean, in and in the vintage range, actually, um footloose and sneak peek had the same weapon mold. So oh boy, here we go. All right. The Crimson Guard, Sal. Where where are you on this one? So I'm I'm not gonna get it. Um, I don't hate it. You know, I, I think it looks pretty good. I I don't like the whole sword thing. Um, not that swords are bad, but his sword just I don't. I like my swords to have a a point on them. Like I th I think I've been spoiled by like McFarlane and Mythic Legions when it comes to swords. Um, yeah, like it looks like a fairly faithful adaptation to me. Like it looks like the right rifle. Um, I'm not sure why he's left-handed all of a sudden. Um, is that? I mean, maybe that's where it is on the vintage. Like I have the vintage figure. I just don't pay attention to things like that. Yeah. Um, but I, maybe they're all left-handed. Maybe it's Crimson Guard. They're all left-handed. Maybe that's a requirement. I don't know. <laughs> but, um. Well, here's the original. Okay, so the sidearm is on the left side. Uh, what that looks yes. like. Yes. Yeah, okay. it Maybe is. Maybe being left-handed is a requirement. This so. is one of my favorite Cobra figures from that kind of era. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I do like this. Um, I do like this classified figure. I don't, I don't get the whole point of the sword. I don't. First of all, I don't like the sculpt of the. Let's um, pull up an image of the sword here. See how it has that um, rounded little thing on it. Yeah, this I, looks I, like a toy holding a toy sword. Um, and I, I understand 
it, it's child safety. They have to pass that in order to be in retail shelves. I, I get that in the yeah. you know, kids aisle. I understand why, but at the prices and all that, I, I, I don't think these are for kids. I think they're for us and Hasbro just puts them in the toy aisle so we can find them. Like, I, I don't think it's anything nefarious or anything like that, but yeah, I just, I'd, ra- I'd rather not have the sword. If that makes sense, like I think I said it on Laser Pants Live in the comments. I was like, "Wake me up when they get the Iron Grenadiers," because I'll, I'll buy a bunch <laughs> of those. Look, but, but much, much like the artwork on the um, uh, on the Zorana box, this sword is not a deal breaker for me either. Because just get rid of the sword. Mm-hmm. I haven't pre-ordered this, but I might. I might get two of these because I did have a particular fascination with the Crimson Garb when I was a kid. I loved them in the comics. I loved the action figure. Mm-hmm. What I would have much preferred over the sword would have been an alternate Fred head um, for yeah. this figure. So an, an, an unmasked head um, mm-hmm. from the, what was the storyline? The Battle of Springfield storyline, I think it might have been in the mm-hmm. comics. So um, p- part of the reason I'm passing is I, I never got, a, if they did, a hooded Cobra Commander, I'd probably get that one because that's the one I had as a kid. I think I've told that story before. Like, I didn't know he, the only Cobra Commander I had had a hood. So when I saw the G.I. Joe movie when I was like 12, I was like, who's this guy? When he had the, the metal face shield. Um, yeah. But I I don't care about the twins. Like, and that's not to say, like, I, I, G.I. Joe, I love G.I. Joe. Uh, it's probably my favorite vintage line. So I have the twins and vintage. I just don't care to get them in six inch space is a premium. And I don't really, I'm kind of 50, 50 on GI Joe uh, classified. So I don't have the twins. I'm not, why would I get the guard if I don't have the twins? So. Well, in the, in the original toy line, the crimson guard came out before the crimson twins did. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. I remember getting this figure one year. And then the twins came into it the following year. I didn't like the twins. I, I I even said on what what it was on a stream. I, I think I was on a stream with Michael and Bobby, and it might have been the chat were asking like, at what point did we think that GI Joe jumped the shark? And a lot of people refer to 1986 when. You know, we've got awesome vehicles like the Tomahawk, but then we got figures like Mm Sci-Fi. For me, the writing was on the wall much earlier. For me, it started to jump the shark with the Crimson Twins. I'm not a fan of my villains wearing S&M gear. S&M gear that is more flamboyant than the um, the Bennett in Commando. (laughs) You know, Bennett in Commando, he, he just looks like a... A bad guy might be a bit of a pervert, not not a full blown like circus act kind of mm-hmm. thing. Um, I think uh, another part of it comes down to, and the, you you know me, you know how I collect. When I buy toys, I buy toys for my other toys. Like I try to, whenever I look at something, like how else can I use this kind of thing? Like especially like I bought that McFarlane Cyborg the other day. I'm like, oh yeah, Action Force. I don't work with that. Or like yeah. I look at, you know, how can I use this with other things? And it's just like, I like the the Cobra villains. I have uh, I have Major Blood, Zartan, and Destro. I think are the only classified villains that I have. And yeah. with the except, I mean, even Destro, because none of them are like blatantly Cobra. So I can fudge them into different things if I want to. Yep, exactly. So, but this one, it, it uh, kind of removes all of that. So, and. Uh, James Salzberg, thank you very much for the super chat. This is a uh, twin should have been in their suits like TV or in the or in the Crimson Guard uniform like this rather than the circus outfits. Yeah, I, I still wouldn't have been interested. Although actually, a, a two pack of characters in suits that I could kind of use elsewhere uh, might have been might have been good. Um, right, so that's all of the the images. As I said, I had no interest in talking about the Python Patrol Cobra Trooper yeah. officer. What it was. Um, when people give the 90s shows such crap, I'm like, okay. 
like the yeah. Python Patrol, Tiger Force, Battle Force 2000. You really want to compare the 90s to the 80s? Okay, we can do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So um, I'm going to remove this now. And I the co so what I want to kind of talk about now, Sal, is um, uh, yep. Plastic free packaging. Mm -hmm. They didn't mention it on this GI Joe stream, but we've seen um, the, the the Marvel Legends team did a stream last week, and then they've been selling their ass on as many different positive only YouTube channels they can find. They've been on like six different YouTube channels in four days, right. um, doing interviews where there are caveats about what they can and can't talk about. They can't talk about price hikes. They're just designers and marketers and whatnot. But what they have said, uh, the Marvel Legends team, is that by next year, 2023, um, Hasbro will fully move away from plastic in packaging in any of their products. Mm -hmm. That means that the days of products like this are coming very quickly to an end, being packaged in this kind of style. Now, uh, this was donated to the channel this card back is as flimsy as the Star Wars retro collection card backs. Mm -hmm. And this has been perfectly stored since I've got it. And it's already starting to come apart. The glue's just dried and coming off the blister. Um, so imagine the quality of the surprise. packaging... Sorry, Sam? I said, imagine my surprise. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I, I, I pulled this out of storage today. Just I was trying to think of a retro-style card back. Uh, and I nearly brought out a, a Black Series one. And then I was like, no, 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 I've, I've got a G.I. Joe one. Like, All right, it's not classified, but it's G.I. Joe. Um, so I pulled this out and, I, you know, I've, I've got vintage card backs that have lasted much better than this. Um, this is cheap card stock. You know, they're probably using the slightest amount of glue possible to glue the bubble on. But for inbox collectors or package collectors who like this kind of thing, who like to display because they like the artwork, or the packaging style, the days are numbered because you're going to be going to solid boxes. Now, I would, with my vintage Action Man collection, Action Man basic figures were all sold in solid boxes. You know, the outfits were sold on blisters to seal the bits because most kids kind of knew what they were getting with the basic Action Man figure. Mm -hmm. But it was the artwork that really sold it to me. What we're seeing now in the Legends line, you're not getting an artwork, you're getting a box with a digital render. It's not the same as a piece of art written, uh, drawn by somebody like Dave Barnacle, who did a lot of the Action Man artwork. Um, was it Hector Garrido did a lot of this stuff here for, for G.I. Joe? Mm -hmm. um, something, obviously, we talked about this um, on Lazy Pants Live last week um, mm -hmm. about this move away from um from plastic in any of the packaging that kind of thing something that's occurred to me since is what are they going to do with builder figure waves in legends yeah that's... because well, I, i've never been a fan of the builder figure gimmick because every wave that comes out six or seven figures whatever it is in a marvel legends wave there's only ever two or three that I want and a whole bunch that I don't want. Mm. And what collectors have had to do over the years, it's a gimmick to get you to buy the whole wave. Right. Which is which is why if there's ever a figure in the wave that doesn't have a builder figure, it's normally the most popular character, like the Iron Man doesn't have the builder figure part. With this now plastic-free packaging, people can buy up the whole wave, go home, get the builder figure that they want, and then put all the um, put the figures back in the packaging that they don't want, take them back to the store and get a refund. Right. Um, the only safe way to, to buy Build-A-Figure Marvel Legends moving forward will be um, to buy them online direct from Hasbro um, or like Big Bad Toy Store or something. Yeah. Mm. I see people online. Excuse me, I guess they people are talking about how they're going to have like a, a tamper seal on the boxes and things like that. So you can tell if it's been opened and this that, you know, like I imagine it'll probably be like a cardboard flap that's like glued down heavily. So if you have to like rip the box to get it open, so you'll be able to tell if it's open. However, comma, um, yeah, yeah, 
having worked in retail myself at one point, you were not paid enough to care. Like if it scans and it goes and the makes system accepts it, like cool, here's your money back. Like I, I, I promise you, there there's no bonus in it for any employee that's like, I caught this guy trying to return a, the wrong toy. Because I'll <laughs> anytime I see a figure swap, like I'll I bring it up to customer service as a fool's errand, but I bring it up to customer service I'm like, hey, this is the wrong thing. It's supposed to be this guy, and they're like, okay, oh, uh, well, do you want it? I'm like, no. Yeah. And they're like, okay, thanks for telling us. And then I'll go back a week later. It'll be back in the aisle with a clearance sticker on it. That's what happens. Uh, the Canuck says uh, his thing is, I not, not the figures plastic, then how much plastic goes into the plastic on the box. The, the thing is, the Canuck, obviously, the fi yes, the figures are made for, of plastic, but they're not sold with the intention that people are going to buy these products to dispose of them. They buy these products to keep them. So action figures, in certainly when you're talking about collectors, they're not ending up in landfills all around the world, whereas the plastic packaging does. That's the difference. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm really in, in two minds about this because much like Ryan, you know, um, he opens everything. He opens everything. I open everything modern. Um, I don't necessarily think I'm going to collect much more modern stuff aside from Valiverse. Um, it's nothing against any other toy line. I just don't have the room. I'm even going to have to slow down on vintage collecting. Um, either that or find a toy line that's really small or something like that. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's good for the environment. It's not great for the collector. All I would say is from now on, I mean, half of this stuff here, you can't find in stores anyway. Mm -hmm. All that Tiger Force stuff, like we're all saying, you know, people in the chat are saying, I, I don't want this. I want the original version. Well, lucky for you, you won't be able to find it anyway because it's a Target exclusive. So, <laughs> um, a wall made it from cardboard. Thank you very much for the super chat. It says, I bet you when this experiment fails, Hasbro will reintroduce the plastic windows for collectors on on HasLab for really overinflated prices. You you may still see a bit of that style packaging, I think, with some HasLab stuff, but I don't think it matters what collectors say or how they react. Their move to go to environmentally friendly packaging is done to appease the shareholders. It's not something they're going to go back on. Um, again, I discussed this a little bit in the Blazer Pants Live um, episode where I also talked about, the, you know, this Hasbro as a corporation, I'll guarantee you, has a target set for um, diversity in the workplace, which is why, you know, they're putting women like Emily in charge of G.I. Joe because they, they have to have women in position, not only employed, but in um, positions of leadership. Um, it's what the modern society is all about, unfortunately. Uh, Robert Diaz, thank you for the super chat. He says, I think Hasbro will go to the Fortnite packaging route after the current route fails. Just one tiny window on the face portion of the figure. I'm not familiar with um, with Fortnite style packaging. Um, I'll have to look that yeah. up, Robert. It, so, it's like a one by one square of plastic right over the portrait of the figure. Okay, yep. So. It's it's very um, bizarre looking, so yeah. Like I, I understand their whole push for the environment and all that kind of stuff. I I get it. Like it's not lost on me, but it's kind of like yeah. kind of a weird thing for them to do, like midstream almost. Like I don't know. I, I I'm just a product of the '90s, and I remember when you know you know save the rainforest to use not paper. So I'm sure. Yeah, we'll see exactly. It. But <laughs> yeah. Well, look, uh, we, we talked a little bit about this article um, in there, again, in that Laser Pants Live. But I just want to bring this up here. What have I just done? Um, I am curious, though. Um, there we go. 
what what will happen because they said by 2023 which will be the 40th anniversary for jedi so i'm wondering if we'll actually see jedi cards for black series or not nope so. you won't you won't and i don't think there's anything they can do about it so um so this article came out um on the 19th of april Hasbro plans to further hike toy prices, warns of $100 million, um, $100 million Russia hit. So uh, Hasbro said on Tuesday it would have to raise prices further to cope with soaring costs and warned of a potential revenue hit of about $100 million this year due to its decision to pause toy shipments to Russia. There's a lot to unpack just in that opening paragraph. There really is. Mm -hmm. um, this is not about the increase in production costs this is about Hasbro and its shareholders getting used to a certain profit margin each year and then not wanting to go backwards they made what like 3.6 billion last year mm -hmm. so if you take this 100 million out that would make it 3.5 billion but that does not satisfy this predatory corporation. They need, they, they, they're not happy with another 3.5 billion this year. They need to get that 3.6 or more. And because they can't get that 100 million out of Russia, you know where they're going to get it? G.I. Joe collectors. These figures, by the end of, by 2023, these G.I. Joe figures are going to be $30, $40 for deluxe figures. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, that's exactly like it's, you know, I, I know I keep using Bobby as an example, but Bobby's, he said, he's like, you know, my cost of manufacturing went up 20%. He's maintained the price of his figure. He's like, I'm not going to raise my prices. You know, I'll just, I'll eat the profit on it. Like, and he's yeah. like, again, he's like a one man show. He's a very small company. And, but, he, but he's in this for the right reasons. Hasbro shareholders, they're not passionate about this stuff like we are. Right. And Hasbro then... shareholders, they don't know where the Rakondo is from Wisconsin or Australia. They don't even know who he is. They don't even know what comic he's from. Right. That's the, they it... care about that $100 million that they're not going to get from Russia. And, that, and they're really annoyed because I'm telling you, it would have taken a lot of pressure for them to stop shipping to Russia. Mm -hmm. Which is something that you know should not have even come up for debate at you know at the shareholder committee meeting or, or whatever. Um, that's and that's, yeah. that's, that's the thing. They're like, oh, because we we stopped shipment. Like that. That's it's like, oh yeah. The, I I know the people that you know the people I'm talking about will come out of the woodwork and they'll be like, you know, how dare you speak ill of my company? Even though they don't work for Hasbro, Hasbro doesn't know who they are. Um. But like love him or hate him, Todd McFarlane's the same way. He's like, my figures will stay twenty bucks. He's like, yeah, you know, I'll. He's like, if I have to raise prices, I'll be the last one to raise prices. Yeah, yep. So, uh, Gojatron is his actual headline. Hasbro planning to raise toy prices after seeing how much Super Seven gets away with charging for their stuff. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, uh, they, they tell you right there. They're like. Yeah, we lost money because we can't ship to another country, so we're going to charge everyone else a whole like a, a bunch more. So, yeah. Now they haven't come out and said there will be price hikes on GI Joe, but watching the upward trend on all their other toy lines, you think they're going to not do that with GI Joe? Well, there was there was that video on Viper Island. Now I don't know what their source was. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm not overly familiar with Viper Island. Like um, Ryan sent us the link a few days back. And um, initially I was like, Viper Island? I've clicked on this before. This is like a full-blown um, shield channel. And then I watched that video and I was like, oh, well, it can't be a shield channel when they're talking about this. Um, but yeah, they, they, were, they were saying that, yeah, G these Geo Joe figures would be 30 bucks by the end of the year. Um, it doesn't surprise because they can't have – they can't be selling this line – for three to five dollars less than legends, when these figures actually come with a bunch of accessories, and legends barely come with anything a lot of the time, right? Um, you know, d d although I, us hardcore collectors, we will understand that they're paying a license fee to Marvel and all of that, 
Right. Um, but it's not about that. It's about what you know, what people see on the store shelf. Right. And, it's you know, and if, yeah, and if, and if in today's economic times, let let's say that you know, growing up, you were a fan of GI Joe and Star Wars and um, Marvel. But now, you know, half a tank of gas costs you fifty dollars. So times are tight. And you're going in, you're going, wow, you get all of that with a G.I. Joe figure for 25 bucks. And from the same company, you get fuck all with your Wolverine figure for 30 bucks. I think I'm just going to collect G.I. Joe. And then all of a sudden, you know, they've, 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 they've narrowed their market. So, yeah, they're competing with themselves. That's what happens when you yeah. gobble up a whole bunch of IPs. Not that they gobbled up G.I. Joe, they created G.I. Joe. That's not lost on me. But, you know, uh, I get a, lot of, a lot of people in the chat here. Is, uh, Diaper Island is Super Shill. Viper Island is a hack and and to boof, whatever that means. Um, yeah, I, I haven't watched enough, enough of their stuff to know. I just know when when, when Ryan sent me that link, um, the one or two videos I had seen, I was like, but this channel's not for me. This is full blown Shill channel. Um, so perhaps I was right. Um, all right, what else have we got in this article here? Um, a spike in COVID 19, yeah, blame COVID, blame Russia, um, blame anything except corporate greed, right? Um, it's everyone's uh, everyone else's fault but theirs. The fans aren't buying enough, Tony. That's that's the problem. Yeah. We don't buy enough. Well, stuff. It says here, added to corporate woes, <laughs> what an expression, corporate woes. <laughs> um, as soaring freight and transportation costs are pinching profit margins. Mm. Hasbro said it would raise prices mid-year and that it was taking steps to mitigate some of the expected supply issues. So expect more price hikes in the next two months. To improve products in stocks this holiday season versus last, we're advancing deliveries of key items so that we can ensure they're on hand. Um... Hasbro shares rose 3.1% mm. uh, to $86.16 in morning. So when they announced that they're going to raise prices, their shares went up. Hmm. The company lifted its fiscal 2022 operating growth profit forecast to mid-single digits from its earlier estimate of a low single-digit rise. Um the monopoly maker's net revenue rose 4% to $1.16 billion, boosted by demand for toys based on Spider-Man No Way Home, as well as the role-playing game Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and & Dragons. Oh, yeah. I forgot they own Wizards of the Coast. Yeah. Yeah. And I was reading another article, which I'm not really going to get into too much here. Um Wizards of the Coast are, are, are making some play at like the next cor big corporate meeting, where they're they're trying to to um, to put some of their own people like on on the board. And Hasbro's telling the shareholders it's all complicated legal bullshit. I got a little bit bored reading it, but um, yeah. Although, um, what what, did, what was the name of that company again? To tell Wizards of the West Coast. Wizards of the Coast, yeah. Yeah. So although they're owned by Hasbro, you know, they still have their own leadership and they're making a strategic play to put some of their leadership in a very powerful position within Hasbro to start making more. And Hasbro is really, really resisting it. Um, right. Interesting to see what, what happens. Yeah, if they keep threatening this, you know, keep, keep trying to put someone on the board. We'll make a card game purely digital. Yeah. You know, got to save the paper, right? Exactly. So while I'm sure there's a lot of collectors out there who really aren't interested in, you know, re reading uh, articles on business news sites like this, um, I do find it interesting. Um, and it speaks a lot about the, you know, the direction of, of where they're going to go. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it's... What, what, what was the Magic 8 Ball outlook not good? Yeah, exactly. So. I, I really feel as though the future of modern figure collecting 
is going to be sitting much more and more with these boutique toy companies mm-hmm. because when has a company like Hasbro are raising their prices to the point where they're not even cheaper than you know Animal Warriors of the Kingdom, Valiverse, all these. I, I can't prattle off a whole heap of names because I don't collect a lot of modern stuff. I'm sure other people can. Right. Um, well, it's like you, you know you if you pr- they're pricing themselves out of the market almost because that was like like I've, I haven't I've had issues with Hasbro for a while, but my my main thing is, well they're cheaper than everybody else. Yep. But, you know, and they're rapidly approaching to where they're going to not be anymore. Like NECA was routinely like $30 roughly for a standalone figure. And even though they're made out of sawdust, like they have better yeah. sculpt and better paint. So. Yep. Exactly. But um, if McFarland could get his bases right, then, you know, he'd be, uh, he'd be giving them a run for their money. Like if I go into GameStop or I go into Walmart, I'm looking at McFarland first. Like Sal, Matt, I I I, I would buy the McFarland um I would buy the Batman figure from the Bat you know the Batman movie. Right. Mm-hmm. All I can find on the store shelves is the unmasked Batman. Yep. And that figure's hideous. Yeah. Um he's gotta work well, on his heads and his faces. It's like what 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 why am I walking into Kmart and seeing four you know, depressed Bruce Wayne figures and not seeing Batman on the shelf. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I was going to buy it. I I preferred the Mezco one, so. Yeah, yep. Well, we we covered everything I think I wanted to to cover on the stream. Lots of repaints from G.I. Joe for the 40th anniversary, which is disappointing, as opposed to new characters. Um, Price hikes, environmental packaging, Things are changing in the modern world of six inch scale action figure collecting. So, yeah, and they're, yeah. they're getting up there with vintage prices. So, they are. They are. There, there's one thing that I've heard people bring up that I forgot to bring up earlier, and it was brought up on Laser Pants Live even. The fact that uh, the classified hasn't made it a habit to give you extra hands with figures, and Sarge comes with two closed fists. So. They they have given us extra hands in some figures, so I'm pretty sure the Cobra Commander. Right, they gave you a pointing finger, I think, for him. Yes, that's right. Again, um, that, that's the and then the first the first deluxe Snake Eyes had, yeah. but he was a deluxe figure, so. Right. And that's he's the they're the exception, not the rule, because generally you only get what comes on them. So yeah. I'm wondering if they might give us like extra hands, maybe. Something and then they said something. They, they better they better not give him just with, with fists. So I think that's a very silly idea. Yeah. So they said there's um, going to be a mystery accessory, which I'm willing to bet it's gonna be a swagger stick, probably. But they said it's gonna come in a cardboard box, which confused me a little bit. Yeah. Why would a swagger stick come in a cardboard box? I don't know if it comes in a cardboard a pack- box. Packaging? Maybe the whole figure's gonna be in a cardboard box. Maybe. I mean, <laughs> If it comes in a cardboard box and it comes in a traditional classified box, people are going to open it, take out the accessory, close that box, close the other box, and return it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jeremy Jernigan, thank you for another super chat. This is great stream, gents. Much appreciated, Jeremy. Um, and for those of you who aren't already aware, Palatalk is returning next Friday night at, I think I said, 6 p.m. Eastern? Or 6 p.m. Central. Let me confirm. It's either 6 or 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, and my guest is going to be Jeremy Jernigan, who, if you watched the last episode of Laser Pants Live, you would have seen him on there. Um, he's got a fantastic presence on screen. He's a military guy. I love his sense of humor. We're probably going to talk toys and rip the piss out of each other for two hours or so. Um, so yeah. I'll, I'll be scheduling that stream a little bit a little bit later. Um, You're going to have Jeremy. Hey. Um, you're going to have Jeremy on? Yep. Yeah, gross. Unsubscribe. <laughs> yep. I, I, I'm really missing doing the Pallet Talks. And um, we, me and Jeremy have been trying to organize this for ages, but he basically went through um, – he actually moved into state. And kind of when he finally got settled, he messaged me. and He's like, right, I'm settled. I've got my collection back out. 
let's do power talk. And I was like, bro, I'm just packing up so I can move. But now we're both uh, relocated. I'm not going to uh, delay this any longer. So next Friday, um, yeah, power talk will be returning. Between now and then, you're going to see a new collection tour video. I'm going to start filming that this afternoon. Um, and that's about it on my end. Sal, where can everybody find you? Uh, well, they can find me inviting myself onto people's streams. That's, uh, that's pretty much <laughs> where, where I'm at right now. Um, no, I'm I'm slowly chugging away. I have a couple of videos filmed. Uh, I just have to edit them. My editing software has been moving really slow, so it's like taking twice the amount of time to edit for some reason. Yeah. Uh, so I have a couple of those filmed. Uh, received a package from one Ryan Laser Pants today. So uh, he sent me a cool little item that I'm going to customize to fudge it into my Action Force stuff. So just got to kind of come up with a name. Well, I have a name. I just have to figure out the acronym for it. I think, I'm, I, think I might know what it is. I won't spoil it here. I'll yeah. wait for your video. Yeah, so it's going to be... It's going to be pretty cool. Um, I wish I'd known about them sooner because I can't find them and I can only find them on Amazon now for twice what they were at retail because reasons. Yeah. Um, but, you know, one's plenty. So but yeah, I got that going now that the U.S. is finally friends with your uh, post again. I can start on that Indiana Jones thing I was going to make for you. So awesome. that's been a year in the making. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Uh, hey, there's yeah. no rush, mate. Protect, uh, you can't rush perfection. So, oh, well, you know, in which case, I better fast forward. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, um, that's, that's about it. And don't, you know, for people that might, you know, still be listening and be angry, or people who tune in, and, I don't know, listen to the entire stream. That that word of concept, right? Uh, we don't yeah. hate everything. We're just very upset with the way things are going. And if you're not upset, then you should be. Because what, like, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Like, it, it, same thing with Star Wars. Like, us wanting to hold Hasbro and other big companies to a higher standard only improves the standard across the board. So it makes it better for you. Exactly. So the, uh, there's, a, there's a reason I'm here with a table full of G.I. Joe, both modern and vintage. I'm wearing a G.I. Joe shirt. I love G.I. Joe. The thought that you should have blind loyalty to a corporation who doesn't know who you are, you need your head examined. It's retarded. So, yeah. uh, all right, we'll call it a day there. Um, you will also see me and Sal later in the year in Iconicon. Mm -hmm. um, man, I'm excited for this year. We've got some awesome stuff. If you haven't already seen it, head over to the Stan Solo um, Instagram page and you'll see this year... We have got an Iconicon convention exclusive action figure that, you know, because it's an online convention, it means everyone's going to have access to the figure. Um, yep. But, um, but it, it's, you know, it, it's been done in conjunction with Iconicon and it is mind blowingly awesome figure. So there you go. Yep. All right. Sal, stay on the line. We'll have a quick chat afterwards. Chat. Always a pleasure. Thanks, everyone. We had like 200 people came out tonight. Um, it fills me with a lot of uh, confidence and enthusiasm to do a few more, um, to do a number of, of live streams uh, over the coming weeks. So thank you all for being here, and we'll see you next time.